Hey folks, this is Clay with Clay's AC and Auto Repair and Clay Motion here in Grand Rapids, Michigan, and this is the Clay Way. If you find this video to be helpful, which I'm sure you absolutely will, please consider subscribing to my page, clicking the notifications, and at the very least, when you find the part of the video you're looking for, just turn that volume down and let my videos play on through. To share my videos, give me the big old thumbs up right there. Send me your nice comments and hit me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair if you got a question for me or if you just want to give me thanks. So this is a video that I've been wanting to make for quite some time. I just forget about it and I don't end up doing it. I'm going to show you a surefire way to check your catalytic converters and see if they're plugged without tearing a bunch of stuff apart, hopefully, depending on what kind of vehicle you're working on. But this information is tried and true to any vehicle. It doesn't matter what kind of vehicle it is. Could be a Yugo, could be a BMW or a Mercedes, even a Ferrari. So we're gonna get going. So you think your catalytic converter's plugged? Well, there's a couple methods that you can use. One, you can use a temperature gun that'll tell you the heat from the front of the cat to the back of the cat. Problem with that scenario is heat dissipates as it travels further away from the engine. So that doesn't actually give you an accurate reading. What we're going to do in this situation is we're going to quite simply remove the O2 sensor before the catalytic converter. And we're going to stick an air pressure gauge, so like a compression gauge, inside the hole. We're going to start the engine up. And if the needle moves at all, we've got blockage in our system. That doesn't tell us if our cat's bad, but it tells us if our exhaust is bad. And if that's the case, if our needle moves at all, which it may or may not, we'll start disassembling the exhaust to figure out which component exactly has the blockage. But at least this will tell us if our system has any blockage whatsoever, being a bad cat or something like that. Now, if you're dealing with the six cylinder version like I'm dealing with right here, you would have to do it on both banks before the catalytic converter. And we work our way away from the engine. So if we check right here and it's bad, then we check right there and it's bad. Maybe we got two bad cats, but maybe we don't. Then we'll separate the exhaust so on the 2009 Chevy Malibu that we're working on today with the V6 engine, we're going to remove the snorkel. We're going to want the car to be up to operating temperature because we want to see if it's restricting the cats after it heats up and everything is expanding. So we're removing the snorkel, but we're going to put that back on when we're done. We're going to remove the O2 sensor down inside there. So now we're going to get our compression tester out and we're going to screw our hose into the O2 sensor. Doesn't have to be real super tight. The air generally passes by the sensor, not so much holding the air back. We'll pr plug in the compression tester. And what we're going to do with the compression tester, if yours is like mine, we're going to go ahead and remove the Schrader valve that's at the end of it because we're not actually testing for compression and we want a constant reading. So if you have a Schrader valve in there, you need to be able to remove it, but I think it's already out of ours. Now we're going to hook our snorkel back up so we have mass airflow sensor reading and all of our hoses. Then we're going to go ahead and keep our gauge plugged in while we start up the vehicle and look at the measurement. Okay, so if you have dead zero like us, we know that we don't have any blockage inside our catalytic converter. Yeah, I didn't even try to push exhaust out of there. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, it's pretty common that they don't, but this is a good way to check, and it really works. Now you would continue to the second catalytic converter if you believe you actually have a catalytic converter problem. You would have to take out the most upper O2 sensor above the catalytic converter to be able to check the second bank. Okay, so we're not going to go to the painstaking task of taking the top O2 sensor out to check for the catalytic converter being plugged because we know that we don't have a plugged catalytic converter. But if you want to do something, you could grab a digital thermometer and with the vehicle running and heat it up to operating temperature, test the temperature here and then test the temperature at the top. And that'll lead you to if you need to remove that upper O2 sensor to check for the pressure reading and the back pressure on it. If that's the case and it doesn't have like a variance, uh, they're probably going to be 100 degrees, maybe 150 degrees variance between the top and the bottom. That's normal from what I've seen. I can't attest to that 100%, but that is a normal situation. 
So let's say you do have a plugged catalytic converter at the front, you got a high pressure reading. What you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna separate your exhaust, okay? Cause we wanna make sure that it's not anything back here like our muffler or something like that causing our back pressure. Then we would do the same check again in the front and if it is plugged still, then you have a bad catalytic converter and we need to ascertain which one it is. So hopefully this video was helpful for you guys I didn't need to do this work. I made this just to give you the idea of how to actually check them. And it is a surefire way of actually checking them. If you think about a long pipe that's closed off on both ends, if you add air pressure to it, your pressure gauge is gonna spike. If the ends are open, your pressure gauge will never spike because it will never add any kind of pressure to the system. So please consider subscribing to my page. I I try to show you guys these neat little tricks that I know and the stuff that I've learned over the years. Hopefully this was helpful. You can reach out to me on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook. Please like my videos, share my videos, send me your wonderful comments. God bless you guys. Have a great day. And remember, if anyone else can do it, you can do it too.